Go ahead. Hello, I'm Bo Evans, a reporter with NOLA.com, the Times Pick Unit, and I'm here today with Rick Dapp. He is the director of the National Hurricane Center, and we are speaking at the 2017 National Hurricane Conference at the Hyatt Regency. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm fantastic. It's great to be back in New Orleans. Been here many times, and I always love coming here, primarily for the food and the people. But we uh, we we need to talk about hurricanes, we and do. this is the time of year to get that conversation uh, going full blast because uh, preparing in advance for the next hurricane is the key to not only living through it but recovering in the aftermath. Right, and so one of the preparations being made now is to take a look at uh, the outlook that a lot of you know news outlets have been covering lately that's showing a slightly less active season perhaps for 2017. I mean, um, you know, some of the basics, what can we really, you know, take from, from that outlook? I mean, is it? Yeah, not a lot. <laughs> now, I, and, I've, and over the last uh, couple of weeks, I've seen some very interesting and on occasion troubling headlines where one headline I saw said, Ho hum hurricane season expected. <laughs> well, what if there's only one hurricane this year? And what if it comes to New Orleans? Ho hum, you know, that's a really bad, devastating event. And the, the, the real issue is science hasn't gotten to the point where we know where the hurricanes that will form are going to go. And so that means there's a big difference between how busy the hurricane season might be, which is what the outlook said, mm -hmm. and how bad it might be where you live. And we've had many past hurricane seasons where they've been below average overall, and we've had major hurricanes hitting in the U.S. Right. 83 with Alicia hitting Texas, 92 with Andrew. That was a below average year, too. I don't think it makes anybody hit by Andrew. Well, better. And, you know, I, I heard a talk yesterday uh, about how um, even though we had Hurricane Matthew this past year, uh, which was devastating in the Caribbean and also along the coast, uh, we the the end of the active era in the Atlantic Ocean might be over, uh, possibly. Well, you know, and that's another potential uh, reality that doesn't make me feel any better because if you look at the last time there was a less active era, we had many hurricanes and major hurricanes that people would rather not have happened hit the U.S. So uh, that doesn't make me feel any better. It shouldn't make anybody else feel any better. The bottom line is the, the, the outlooks are good science to pursue. I mean, we're never going to eventually figure out uh, how to forecast hurricane landfalls way in advance unless we pursue the science, but we're not there yet. And what we have to do is understand what you can get out of it and what you can't get out of it. And we've got to prepare the same way every year because if if you if you bank on the outlook being below average, meaning that it's going to be a good year for you, and then that one hurricane that you weren't counting on is now on your doorstep later this year, and you haven't done anything to get ready, then doing the things to prepare at the last minute not going to turn out so well. An evacuation plan, getting insurance, buying supplies, more difficult, more expensive, if not impossible to do at the last minute. It's just not worth it. I'm not going to risk my family and my home by listening to the outlook and saying, nah, we're not going to prepare this year. Just, just not good advice, um, and it only takes one. Well, in terms of making preparations, National Hurricane Center has some uh, new products that I've been yep. hearing a lot about lately, but um, um, on, on one of them, a lot of times we get a lot of flack, and I'm sure you all do too, about you know covering the tropical storms and the ones that haven't formed so much, and we think, well, we're just scaring everybody. So, so you guys, I think, are going to have a uh, a new ability to uh, warn people when there's a potential of a tropical storm. Coming, yeah, we're gonna right? we're gonna have a new option. Right. It's not something we're gonna do all the time, but let's turn the clock back and remember some of the past events in which a tropical storm hasn't yet formed, but it's trying to, and it's about to form right near the coast. We had no option to issue tropical storm watches or warnings. We couldn't put out our forecast because it hadn't satisfied the definition of a tropical storm yet, or even a depression. That is a situation we don't want to have ever happen again. And a lot of emergency managers, media partners, and the public didn't like the fact that we couldn't do that. Now those restrictions are removed, but we're only going to do it when we have a high confidence that a depression or storm is going to form in the next couple of days. And it's close enough to land that it's time now to issue any watches or warnings. 
and we want to issue the right washer warning at the right time, even if it hasn't satisfied a certain definition. But we're not going to overdo it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to start issuing watches and warnings on every puff of cloud that enters the Gulf of Mexico. You know? right. We're going to restrict ourselves to the high confidence situations where we think on balance it's far better to get the right watch and warning out a little earlier uh, so that we don't have watches and warnings going out at the last minute, leaving you with not enough time to do anything about it. So it, when it comes time, if it comes time that you know I write a story or somebody else says a potential tropical storm warning has been issued, what, how would you uh, like you know, our readers to view that sort of story. I mean, yeah. well, we've actually tried to make it as simple as possible. The tropical storm watches and warnings, hurricane watches and warnings will still be called that, will still be issued at the same time frames at 36 and 48 hours in advance. What we call them, the criteria for using them isn't going to change. So when you hear tropical storm or hurricane watch or warning, it still means the same thing as it always said. The watches mean that conditions are possible in the next couple of days. The warnings mean that conditions are expected somewhere in that area within the next 36 hours. What you might hear, and this will be the only difference, is instead of tropical depression three, you might hear potential tropical cyclone three, because it hasn't quite satisfied the definition yet. But otherwise, everything else is the same. The advisories, all the products will look, smell, feel like, advisories on a real tropical depression. It just it hasn't quite gotten there yet, so it's a potential tropical cyclone. And then, if it does become a tropical storm, it gets the name like always, and on with the usual process. So uh, I don't want anybody to overthink it and get too concerned about it. It's really going to be pretty simple. Right. And it really, the, the, the easiest way to think about it is, you might just start getting advisories a little sooner from us, and it'll, it'll be like you got a depression a little bit sooner. Otherwise, everything else will be the same. Right, and hopefully you don't actually get depressed. <laughs> no, in fact, we want people to have the right information a little farther in advance when it's necessary, rather than waiting until it's too late for people to act on the watches and warnings. And on that note, there's there's also, on top of that, you know, you have several new things that are coming out, and, and the, the big one that we've seen so far, maybe, is the storm surge warnings and forecasts for that. So, I mean, I know it's got a lot of information, but tell us why warnings about storm surges are so important and what we'll be able to see now for this year. So again, why do we have separate products, separate graphics, separate watches and warnings for storm surge when we've already got products and watches and warnings for hurricane? And the main reason is that the hurricane force winds and tropical storm force winds don't always occur at the same place and at the same time as the storm surge. And you know, we've been pushing toward these new storm surge products for a long time because overall, Historically, it has been the deadliest hurricane hazard, but it doesn't have its own warning. I mean, my gosh, what have we been waiting for, you know? But we're there. This year, the Weather Service storm surge watches and warnings go operational to highlight where there's the potential and, in the case of the warning, the danger of life-threatening storm surge so that there's clear communication from us and the Weather Service about the areas that are truly posing a storm surge danger, and the main call to action is going to be mm -hmm. for you to follow evacuation or other instructions from your local emergency management officials, who are not only going to be using the storm surge watch warning in their toolbox, but also that new potential storm surge flooding map that became operational last year. Uh, so th their decision making for evacuations is a lot more clear than it used to be. Instead of just relying on the category and the track, they're looking at this depiction of where the storm surge could occur given all the characteristics of that storm. And we also might have a better sense of how to prepare for possible flooding, which is the, the big problem when it comes to hurricanes, really. Yeah, in fact, nine out of 10 people that die in US tropical cyclones die in water. Half of them due to storm surge, about one out of four die in the inland flooding due to heavy rainfall, at the beach, on boats. Water is the biggest killer. And we want people to know where the water hazards could occur more clearly. And call those out in particular products, call those out in their own watches and warnings, and emergency managers have been with us along this journey to get to this point, the new products and warnings. They've got new plans new procedures, new exercises that they've been going through to get ready to use these new products. And I think it's all for the better of the public. They're going to be better informed. Everybody's going to be more on the same page. And the instructions from emergency managers 
when you're told to go. This can be based on the best information, new type of information. Uh, and they don't make these evacuation decisions lightly. So when you're told to evacuate, go. And your homework assignment right now is to have an evacuation plan. You know, plan for where you're going to go and how you're going to get there if you're ever told to evacuate. Right. So you've been uh, around hurricanes for a long time, yeah? And uh, you've seen New Orleans withstand some hurricanes, I'm sure. And how, how have you seen, you know, we could spend hours talking about this, but how have you seen New Orleans kind of develop, you know, in the years since Hurricane Katrina? And, and what do you think it's important for uh, people in New Orleans to know now with the hurricane season on our doorstep? Yeah, but thinking about hurricanes in New Orleans and Louisiana certainly brings back a lot of memories for all of us, depending on what we went through. My personal recollection from Katrina was that I was the forecaster on duty when it went to Cat 5. And uh, there's so many things about that event that have brought about changes that I think are for the better. Um, of course, the big hurricane risk reduction system in the New Orleans area hopefully will lessen, not eliminate, but lessen the impacts of future hurricanes. Uh, but I don't want people to think that a, a really bad, devastating event can't happen again. It might be a lot different than Katrina was, but uh, look what happened in, in 2012 with Isaac. You know, some places that didn't flood in Katrina did flood in Isaac. Well, how could that happen? Isaac was so much weaker. It wasn't as bad overall as Katrina, but it took a different track. It had its own DNA. It behaved its own way. And so everyone needs to realize that the next hurricane could be the worst for you, where you live, that you've ever experienced, either due to wind, water, or both. So don't just... You know, look to the past and say, okay, that's about as bad as it could ever be where I live. You know, your worst hurricane could be coming up. Hopefully not this year. Hopefully not ever, but it could be. And that's why we have to prepare. Don't have the mindset that it can't happen to you. Indeed, hopefully not. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, Thanks for having me. Thanks all right. for all the hospitality. Well, thank you. And uh, that's that.